What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Hello, everybody, and happy Sacred Sunday. You get two hosts today. You get Scott and you get Eden Amadora. Hi. Uh, and a reminder for everybody to please keep themselves muted, as we don't want to hear those accidental words that can pop out of our mouths in the morning or at any time. <laughs> uh, welcome. It's beautiful, beautiful Sacred Sunday. Eden and I are blessed to be here in Ashland, Oregon. Let's just mute all. Um, you know that right there. Yeah, we're going to mute all for right now. Yeah. There we go. I'm on it too, brother. <laughs> okay, thank you, Omashar. Omashar is with us, as you just heard his voice. And I want to welcome all of you. Um, we have a beautiful show. You know, periodically we do a show on authors that we love. And we've got not one, not two, but three authors that we love on today's show. And they all have written really beautiful books, many of which I think are going to be of value to you watching. Um, and speaking of that, I want to welcome those of you coming into our Zoom room. I see a lot of our regulars and our friends are coming in. But I also want to acknowledge that a lot of you are watching on Facebook. Um, and a big thanks to those of you who are watching um, on our different broadcast partners. One of our broadcast partners is Humanities Team. And the founder and creator of that is Steve Farrell. And he's with us. He's one of our authors today. So we're going to meet Steve and learn more about Humanities Team and his book. But we also have most of you watching on Facebook. And thank you to John and Summer Raymer with the Sign Network. They get us out to all those Facebook groups and pages. So thank you to Alan Steinfeld for his YouTube channel. Um, if you are watching on Facebook, that's cool. But come on in. Come join the Global Peace Tribe. It's really easy to do that. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com. Globalpeacetribe.com. You can learn all about who we are, the shows that we do. You can get a free copy of Deborah Juicy's amazing book about activating your soul tribe. And then click where it says register for the new season. And when you click that, it's going to take you to our registration page. We do three or four shows every week, Wednesday night, Saturday night, Sunday mornings. And each show is special and unique. For example, um, here's last night's show, which was a really amazing show that Eden and I enjoyed doing with them. Um, members of the Twin Ray community and the Twin Ray themselves. And then here's today's show, Authors That We Love. And you're going to meet Patrice Karst, Steve Farrell, and Chanel. Um, so definitely join us. And the advantage to joining the Global Peace Tribe is you're going to get the links to our Zoom rooms for all, all of our shows for the next three months. And that way you can come on in, you can ask questions, you can get the links, um, you're going to get special discounts to things. Um, and most of all, you're going to join a really beautiful community of people from all over the world. I see right now we've got people from British Columbia, um, all the way down to Ecuador, all over the United States. Uh, people are watching in Germany right now. Hello, Yen. So uh, there we go. 
It's a Sacred Sunday show. I'm going to pull back and I'm going to turn it over to Eden to lead an opening meditation. Thank you, Scott. We have little Jasmine Bear right here too. She's our, our little <laughs> calming mascot. <laughs> so, um, Omashar, do you want to accompany me on the meditation with some really sweet, soft music? Is that possible? Um, we didn't do a test on it. And until you get it synced, sometimes his music overshadows okay. you speaking. All right, we'll do that in the silence then. That's, yeah. that's beautiful too. So let's first just bring our hands together in front of our hearts and feel your sacred heart beneath your palms here with the mudra of namaste. And take a few deep collective breaths with me. Let's actually even use the sound of our breath and our exhale to release some energy that maybe we've been carrying. So deep inhalation. Ah. And just sighing and allowing all that's no longer serving just to flow down into the earth. Two more times. Ah. One more deep, deep breath with sigh. Feels so nice. So now letting the sigh go and bowing your chin a little and bringing your awareness to that space behind your namaste mudra. Dive deeping into the heart chakra and finding towards the back of your heart chakra this place that I like to call the sacred heart. And just breathing into that as if you could breathe into the back of your heart and feeling your prayer, your intention for the sacred Sunday, feeling your gratitude for all that is sacred in your life. And just taking a couple of breaths and really bringing into your awareness. It's like when we, and I love our beloved Sanandaji said, think with the heart and feel with the mind. When we have loving thoughts and the cultivation of gratitude, what brings you joy, it raises your frequency. So really feeling and thinking with the back of the heart, all that you're grateful for. I'm grateful for this time and Ashlyn, my friendship with Scott, my healthy body, the bird song. Just feel what you're grateful for. One more deep breath. And then placing the palm of your right hand right on your heart, feeling the warmth. And go ahead and place your left palm down below your navel in your power center. And if you can now just lean a little bit more into the back body, we're often very forward leaning. Feel what it's like to bring the crown of the head back and to lift the petals of the heart. Now that we've access that sacred heart let it blossom feeling the heart lifting as if it's leading and opening to this inner sun breathing into that beauty of your own heart as the lotus and the sacred jewel in the center is your holy innocence your eternal essence and give your precious heart just a little bit of energy with that palm of light and just feel how that activates this connection to yourself in a loving way. Mm -hmm. This releases oxytocin. It calms the nervous system. There's neuroscience behind this. It's really good for you. So bringing in an inner smile. And now bringing your awareness up to the space behind your brow. And just feel this light, beautiful energy. I like to call it the language of light, our divine mother tongue, just showering down through your crown and into the light sensitive parts of your brain, the pineal, the pituitary, and feel if you can tap into a certain color frequency that's working with you and just let it bathe your body, these healing frequencies, breathing and receiving. Oh. Ah. And then letting this light start to bathe through the skull, all the muscles in the face relax, feel the eyes really being blessed up by this inner light, closed eyes. 
and then it pours down to the base of the skull. And just as the, the space behind our brow activates this kind of seeing that we see each other in the truth of our essence, we see each other in the beauty of our interconnectedness, and we open that eye, that thine eye be single. Down at the base of the skull, there's a listening channel. How can we listen to the vibration behind all words? On this sacred Sunday, let's make a vow to be better listeners. Mm -hmm. And just feeling this energy opening up and pouring into our throats. Ah. Mm -hmm. And just letting that inner smile. Mm. You could even swallow down that that smile feeling and soothing like a sweetness. Just all that we've been holding, all the ways that maybe we've swallowed our truth or our knowing. And in this moment, we fully just shine the light there to lift the energy and trust our voices, trust that with clear seeing and clear listening, we can speak in love and we can communicate in ways that bring harmony to this world together. Deep breath and then feeling the energy pouring down from the throat into the body, back down under that hand of light. And the spine, Yogananda would say, the spine is the highway to the divine and it need not be stiff. If there's a wave with your breath or energy moving, if you wanna just open and mm. stretch a little bit. Mm. Ah. Wow. Feel this beautiful light just flowing down the Shashumna channel, the central channel, and the subtle, mysterious energy of that cerebral spinal fluid just being activated with pure light codes for your body, for your health, and then letting that heart blossom again. And then we're going to slowly bring that hand of light that's been on the heart chakra and place it over your solar plexus, your diaphragm. Uh, and just feel that heat, that warmth of your palm and that support that when we're bringing these higher frequencies in, we can move with this sense of center and respond from love instead of react. So just for any places that we've been in reactivity or just collapsing and overwhelm or blowing open and trying to control things in this moment, just releasing all of that into the deepest love and compassion, holding that power center, knowing true power is love and only love. Deep breath into the, the back of that chakra, nourishing our kidneys, our adrenals. And this is a Taoist chi practice. We're gonna take a palm of light and just go in the direction of our digestion and blessing your Buddha belly and blessing three slow circles around, integrating, assimilating, in the East, they call the belly the second brain. There's so much information, intuition. Our health mm -hmm. starts in the belly. So just blessing our bellies that we can keep integrating and digesting all the big earth changes, all the waves with grace. And then we bring both of our hands together down under the navel, forming a downward triangle. And just feeling the sacral chakra. I love how the word sacral as sacred embedded in it, the sacred place that so much of our, our energy is stored, that Shakti Kundalini, and just breathing into the sacrum and just feeling this, this vow to flow. This is a watery chakra, so we're going to flow with life in a more graceful way, mm -hmm. just intending to really trust and flow with the process of life. And then we open our beautiful palms of light as if we're holding lotus blossoms on our laps. Deep breath and feel your root and feel this grounded energy just flowing through your hips, down your thighs, past your knees and legs. And the root chakra just relaxing, no more tucking, no more fight and flight, just open, soft, heart first, root soft creating resourcefulness, safety. Feel our feet really just opening the soul chakras. And from all around the world, we now ground together on this precious, precious earth. Gaia, feel this 
column of light. Scott and I are forming a really big one in tandem here that's just rooting down into the earth through what we're sitting on the floor, down into the earth below the foundation, this beautiful home of our beloved friends. And feel us all like acupuncture needles on Gaia's skin, that we're bringing these higher frequencies in for the one, for the collective at this time. And feel your love, and feel your gratitude, and let earth hold you and flow back up your grounding core. If you can plug all the way down into our crystalline core, mm -hmm. just feel this connection to this earthly goddess Gaia. Take a deep breath, and then we draw all of that back to our own precious hearts and bowing our chin one more time in such gratitude for this sacred Sunday, this sacred moment, this chance to come together in this good way. And I bow to you for showing up for yourself, for being here with us today. And we can slowly, gently open our eyes. Life 
get out that little flute you know uh, when I, it's it's awesome. Awesome. I know this i believe is made in new mexico yeah it's 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 a, it's called a spirit flute and it's a flute to call in the spirits so um what a concept <laughs> Beautiful. your tone it's almost like a native american piccolo um right exactly it's phenomenal i have all, um several size flutes and that's one of my uh, favorite even though it's so simple mm. yeah and thank you for that beautiful opening, Eden. Thank you so much for bringing us in, all of us, together. Yeah. You two are an amazing combination. Her meditation, your music, I'm just like so relaxed. Next time we shall um, do the uh, sound thing. Anyway, onward and forward. Yeah. Hey, a reminder, everybody, that uh, you can learn much more about Omashar by going to his website. And his website is his name, omashar.com. And so um, this is a wonderful way to get more of Omashar. Um, and there's announcements all about him and most of all the links. And Bandcamp is the best way to buy his music uh, because Bandcamp is the most um, generous. So uh, please do support Omashar. And he'll be back with our closing song. I'm um, looking forward to that. Thank you so Thank much. You. Well, our uh, first presenter is somebody that I just met for the first time in person. We've known each other, I think, Steve, for probably a couple of years now, because um, we've been on the show before. Um, but we met in Sedona um, in March, and he's a great guy, and he runs Humanities Team. Now, we're going to learn all about Humanities Team a little bit later in the show, but I want to start by learning about Steve. And I'm going to do a, a different way of introducing him. Um, I'm going to go to his website, which is steveferrell.org, and I'm going to put that in the chat box. But I want you to notice something. Take a look at all the people that are promoting Steve and his book. They're all of our favorite presenters. Greg Braden. Now, I have to say, Ken Honda, I'm not familiar with. But Michael Beckwith is my dear friend who's been on this show many, many times. Who's Greg Braden. Deborah Poneman, these are all people you've seen on the, yeah, all the people that you've seen on the Awakening World. Um, and these are all the people who are uh, talking about the power of this book that Steve has written. Um, so congratulations, Steve, on having that level of support from so many of our favorite luminaries. Oh, he needs to be unmuted. Oh, unmute, Steve. Get myself unmuted here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Eben. Omashar. Wow, what a beautiful start there, really. Exciting to be here with you all uh, and to share a little bit, a little about my book here on the Sunday. Yeah. Um, well, again, it's impressive how many people are singing your praises. Um, and uh, so many of the people we really, really love on this show and respect. Tell us the story, because you have this amazing story of going from a Silicon Valley businessman to somebody really dedicated to an awakening world playing your role. So Steve, tell us your story. Yes, well, so it is a true story. It's, uh, in, in some ways, it's almost like a manifesto. Uh, it starts with me at age 12, and then I share the story all the way to, to today. Uh, it's an unlikely story in some ways because uh, it starts out actually probably, um, like most of us, I'm guessing, growing up by my my parents were divorced, so when I was 12 years old, uh, I had a single mom, working mom, and I had six siblings. So imagine that she's working full time, <laughs> raising seven kids. Not, not an easy task. And then I went from that to out to I moved out to Northern California to San Francisco, right out of college, and I was I was in the right place at the right time. I started two businesses right in Silicon Valley. 
that went to uh, 75 million each. The first one, it took 10 years. The second one, we did it in two years. And that then gave me entrance to these, the uh, really the center of uh, wealth creation there in Silicon Valley, the business groups that are there, uh, Young Entrepreneurs Organization, Young Presidents Organization. I was an officer on both. And uh, and there in YPO, in my chapter, was uh, Gavin Newsom, who now is the governor of California, Andy Cunningham, who was the marketing genius that worked with Steve Jobs that launched the Macintosh, uh, Hamid Mogadam, who runs the largest real estate equity investment trust in the world, and then others. These are just three of the of the of the uh, amazing people that were a part of that chapter of my life. Uh, and candidly, um, you know, it was it was the American dream, which starts with equal education, equal opportunity. But if you keep climbing that ladder, as so many people do, then you go up into this whole power, fame, and fortune thing. And this is where, on the one hand, I met these extraordinary people. I learned a lot. I really did. I still love uh, many of these people today. But on the other hand, uh, I also found that whole, as you as you keep climbing those rungs of the ladder, American dream, that that uh, takes you into this mirage thing where there's this oasis that you're seeing on the horizon, you know, $75 million company. But then what so often happens is, oh, after a night or two of celebration, let's take this company to $150 million. And then after you get to $150 million, uh, after a night or two of celebration, let's take the company to 300 million. And so it goes. So it, it's kind of like this mirage where there's this oasis that's always on the horizon. You never quite get there. And when you hit the jackpot like that and you build a company like that, what so often happens is then you want to keep it going. And so you want to keep that top line and bottom line thing going. And so you're putting a, so much energy into that that your relationships can uh, be quite challenged with your partner, with your kids, with your coworkers, with your best friends and friends, with your neighbors. And so this is this is kind of what I could see. And of course, even in the mid 90s, the world was quite similar to today in the sense that global warming was quite prevalent and there were many challenges. And so I was experiencing a lot of cognitive dissonance then of, wow, you know, I didn't grow up like this at all. Private jets, all of this kind of thing. I did not grow up that way. Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, I also uh, went through my awakening there in the mid-90s. I read Neil Donald Walsh's Conversations with God book. For me, that was the particular awakening device where we really come to know who we are, which is what this program is about. We understand we're, you know, 8 billion faces of the one, right? Even science is affirming that now where we see there's this big, you could call it, organism, which is the universe or the cosmos, where all all of it, physical and non-physical, is we're faces of the one, right? Waves on the ocean, whatever, however we want to refer to that. So uh, through that process, then I lost my passion for business and I set out on this conscious journey, which is what this whole program is about, what viewers are about, where uh, of course it's a completely different world, right? the meditation that we just took, the music that we just listened to, where we're now coming into this space of the sacred, right? Of That we understand we're, we're, we're offspring, we're, we're an energy, a wave of the one, right? So everlasting life, unlimited potential, all of these things. And there's still small voices there that's guiding us if we want to, if we want to be guided by it. So this is what I turned my attention to. I did sell everything. Uh, I left those business associations. I moved from Silicon Valley to Boulder, Colorado, where I'm coming in from here this morning with my family. And uh, with, with Neil Donald Walsh, who, who of course wrote the Conversations with God series, I launched then with him, Humanities Team, almost exactly 20 years ago to the month. We launched it in June, 2003 in Wilsonville, Oregon. And uh, since that time, I've been the executive director of Humanities Team. We have a streaming platform for conscious people and Global Oneness Summit and a lot of these kinds of things. And the book tells that story. The book actually is written for the reader. Uh, and this was why I was called to write the book, because there are, as we know, many, I'll call it arduous moments on this journey into conscious living, especially in those early years when I went to my family, 
my coworkers, uh, to uh, all of the Silicon Valley uh, crowd. And I said, you know, I'm being called to something spiritual. I don't really, I don't belong in a business association anymore. I don't really have anything to contribute to that. I'm now going to turn my life to family and this, this conscious path. And uh, I'm grateful I was married to somebody who could, could make that U-turn with me. You know, most women would have said, <laughs> you know, I'm not leaving this life, which was this, this life of luxury for this conscious life. My wife uh, said, great, let's do it. Here we go. And we adopted two kids actually shortly after that time. And, and this is where, as we know, this is why everybody's watching this program. This is where we find the deliciousness in life, the, the, the real treasure, real prosperity. It's not just in financial wealth. And I'm sure a lot of people know other people in Silicon Valley, New York City, et cetera, with financial wealth that are not truly happy people. Uh, when we live consciously, these things we were just meditating on, where we feel this loving presence, where we see the sacred in life, where we put ourselves, uh, turn our attention to, I'll call it loving service, where we, you know, we're called to our own station in life. My particular calling was, oh, go found humanities team with Neil Donald Walsh and then create a streaming platform and put these conscious masterclasses all over the planet, translate them, bring the price down. We're a nonprofit. So don't bring the don't take the price up bring the price down give it away we're a we're a nonprofit so we have a one for one program when people subscribe to our uh, streaming platform we gift a free program to an underserved underprivileged individual usually outside of the United States because even though it's an economical platform uh, outside of the US three hundred dollars uh, uh, um, uh, for a year is is beyond a lot of people's reach even the monthly uh, which is about forty dollars a month, is beyond people's reach for a lot of people outside of this country. So, uh, so that was my calling. That's what I serve every day, and my home. I mean, if if we'll get into this, I'm sure as we talk. But the contrast between me and today's world, and what I have in my home, and the culture and humanities team that where my coworkers, my partners and colleagues that I work with, what we do together, versus. Uh, back in Silicon Valley, where I was with the venture capital crowd and and that crowd, it's night and day. Uh, it's night and day. It's uh, you know again, this is and and I know that's why people are here, because the real deliciousness in life, the real wow, you know, uh, is here. Amazing, Steve. That was so inspiring to hear your story. And my my heart longs for you to speak a little bit more about how this American dream, this kind of materialistic <laughs> climbing of the mountain can actually really damage people's hearts. I know this kind of patriarchal competitive model is so yeah. um, challenging for us to feel community and like collaboration of spirit. And did you hit any kind of like dark night of the soul? Were there any parts of that world that you just like it was painful for you to continue in that way. The the thing that was that was interesting was in that day where I had then founded these two companies and grew them, everybody treated me then like a rock star. My neighbors, the people in the company were like, wow, this guy, you know, did it, he did it once and then he did it again. And even my family, you know, thought, wow, you know, now. Then when I left everything and I and I said I may never draw another paycheck in my life, people, which is 20 years ago, you know, people thought I'd lost my mind. They they thought I'd, you know, are you serious? You know, what what is that altar going to bring you, Steve? You know, I had, my, older the brother, game. my older brother who loves me dearly flew out and said, Steve, you know, oh boy, what are you doing? You know, you you you've got the lottery ticket. You're there. You know the people. Are you sure you want to walk away? You know, so and again, this is part of the reason I wrote the book because uh, I think a lot of people on this conscious journey have moments like this where you really have to tune out the worldly noise. You have to listen to that still small voice. And and again, 
Uh, and another thing, a lot of people think that when we journey consciously that, oh, we're going to now give it all up and now we're going to live in a cave and maybe not be able to eat well or something. It's not like that at all, as we know, you know, give unto the kingdom and all things are given unto you. Boy, get ready for a delicious life. So, uh, so it, you know, that that's the interesting thing is, is even today, um, honestly, my most of my family would not, you know, uh, not as... Uh, excited about my life as as uh, 20, 25 years ago. And that's okay. That's part of this whole, you're, you're, you're tuning out the worldly noise thing because there's there's a still small voice that is very clear. It's actually for me more of a feeling than a voice, but it's very clear about what, what I am to do, you know, what my role is in the world and what's going to bring me just that that joy that I want to live into every day. And, and that's the thing I pay attention to every day, not not the noise around me. It feels like when you speak about the still small voice, you're connecting to your heart more than this, you know, putting the mind on the altar, more data, more intellect, more success. It's like, wait, there's a deeper guidance here. Yeah, it's like it's going from, I'll call it the logic center of the mind to the wisdom center of the soul. Mm. Where, uh, and in that soul place, which we could also call it our heart, because uh, our heart feels that. Uh, it's where we just can feel it. And it's like, for me, there's all this talk about uh, autonomous driving now with electric cars. So this is like autonomous living because mm -hmm. where we live from this place, we can even feel like the guardrails on either side. So if I start to, there's some temptation and I, I, I can feel that guardrail of, okay, Steve, you know, let's get back right into the center there. Boom, you know, and if mm -hmm. we just stay centered in it, it's 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 just the most beautiful life ever is is my experience and what and of course i know you all would share the same thing we're going to have a lot more of steve a little bit later um but i want to meet our other two authors and then we're all going to come back and talk a little bit about some of these things steve which you meet our next two people because you're going to enjoy them and i i know they really enjoyed what you had to say so we'll be back with steve in a moment you know he talked about listening to that small voice and our next author is a longtime friend of mine and she listened to the voice and wrote a book. Um, and it, well, wait till you hear her story. Uh, she's a single mom who listened and her books have sold over one and a half million copies even. And so this is my friend, Patrice Karst. Uh, welcome, Patrice. Hi, Scott. Nice to meet you, Eden. And hi, everybody. Patrice, your story is amazing. So I'm just going to put the spotlight on you. Please tell us all about God Made Easy and the Invisible String and how it all happened. Yeah, so it has been um, quite the journey. Um, I, my book career started um, on November 11th of 1995 when I woke up out of a dream um, and I saw these words hovering in the air. God made easy. And I had no idea why I was seeing them, but this little voice, if you will, said um, inside of me, uh, go grab a notebook and start writing. And very long story short, um, I wrote. I wrote for an hour. Um, it just kind of poured through me. I ended up signing a book deal with Warner Books, an imprint of Time Warner. And um, the book came out in 1997. And did incredibly well. It was just a little book about God, but for people of all religions, all faiths, it was a spiritual book, not a religious book. And um, I got paid very well with that book, um, which then allowed me to write other books. Um, I wrote a book called The Single Mother's Survival Guide. Um, and I thought my career was going to be in the adult book world, um, but other amazing things happen. And what happened was that um, I was a single mom and um, my son, Elijah, had, you know, really bad separation anxiety when I would bring him to school in the morning. He really, really missed me a lot and he would cry. Um, and then I would cry as I was driving away and we were both a hot mess. And um, I didn't know how to solve this issue of the separation anxiety. And so one morning, I simply told him what was just very obvious to me, which was that um, 
we were connected all day long by an invisible string. And that um, I, when he missed me, all he needed to do was to tug on the string and I would feel it in my heart and I would tug it back and he would feel it in his heart. And um, until we saw each other again, when I came to pick him up um, later in the day. And like that, his separation anxiety stopped. He said, we're really connected mama by an invisible string. And I was like, absolutely. And then all his little friends wanted to hear about the invisible string. So I told them all about it and they wanted to know, can it go to my, you know, um, you know, Uncle Paul, who's in jail? Can it go to my best friend that moved away? Can it go to my grandma who lives in Mexico? And I knew I had something really special. I knew that somehow this metaphor of an invisible string was giving children a tangible explanation of the incredibly abstract idea of love and connection. So I thought, all right, how, what do I do here? And I thought, write it as a children's story and um, get it published. And I would have been thrilled, honestly, Scott, I, I would have been thrilled if I had sold 500 copies of the book. I just, I, I, I just thought it was an important message. And if it helped even one other child besides Elijah, then um, I had done well. So I went to a very small publisher that I knew, um, showed him the manuscript. He said, I love it, let's do it. And he put the book out, the book came out in 2000. And it was a very, very small publisher. Like I said, he had no distribution in the Barnes and Nobles and Borders of the World. Um, there was no advertising budget, um, but the book started to catch on. I was doing other things. I was involved in a lot of other creative projects and um, I was just happy that the book was out. And then the miracle happened, which was that um, I'm gonna say probably about 10 years ago, it was sort of the, hundredth monkey effect suddenly everybody was talking about the invisible string i had um military you know the military was using it for deployed families the prison system started using it for incarcerated parents um to read to their children uh foster groups adoption groups hospices hospitals therapists um social workers uh you know bereavement groups grief counselors it just started to explode um then about five years ago, I um, had a big publisher pick up the book um, and they blasted it into the stratosphere. We're now, as you said in the beginning of the introduction, we've sold over a million and a half copies now. It's been translated into um, 17 languages to date. And that it all sprung off a whole, um, oh, and here's the invisible string, by the way. It's the invisible string. It sprung um, a whole series of books about invisibles, um, the invisible leash, about our animals that pass away, the invisible web, which is how we're all connected by invisible strings. And we really live in a web of love. Um, the invisible string workbook I did with Dr. Dana Weiss, who's a PhD in art therapy to help children take the message of the book to the next level with activities. Um, on and on and on and on. A lot of other books have been created. And when COVID happened, when we all got to experience what it was like to not be physically in the presence of those that we loved, um, for a lot of us, uh, that's when the book sort of went to the next level, um, because all the teachers all over America were using the book to help their students, who were all Zooming, um, feel connected to one another. And so the book is just continue to um to just <laughs> i don't know to just keep multiplying i feel like there's all these ambassadors of love out in the world because each person that finds out about the invisible string then goes on to tell five other people about it and then those five people tell you know um i call it true string theory honestly um you know it's it's patrice's version of string theory um and, and then the other piece that happened which was quite um, astounding is that adults um, buy it for each other. It's even though it's clearly a children's picture book, adults started buying it, spouses for one another to say, I love you and always will, um, adult children for their parents, parents for their adult children, neighbors when one of them moves away. So it's sort of crossed over into 
you know, it's sort of become a thing now. Sometimes I'll see people, you know, they'll go to me like this, like they're showing me. It's it in a way it's become sort of a cultural phenomena where um, there's there's no stopping it now. In song lyrics, people talk about the invisible string in movies and TV shows. I hear it all the time. So it's just it's been a thrill. It's been the ride of a lifetime, honestly. <laughs> My, my heart's bursting because in the very beginning of your share, you talked about your, your little boy, Elijah, who had separation anxiety. And my little boy, who's now six foot one, 17 and a half, his name Elijah, uh -huh. same exact thing happened. And his teacher would say, this will pass every single day for the first year of school. It was torture. I really wish I'd had your book then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I had had my book growing up, you know, I, I would have helped me a lot. They say that we, um, we end up writing or teaching that which we most needed or need to know ourselves. And um, I'm glad that you shared that story with me, because I think all moms can relate and separation anxiety is a very, very real thing. What's interesting about the invisible string is it's become, um, and has for many years held the uh, the spot of being the number one book for children um, for death and dying grief, um, as well as separation anxiety. But then it's also used, you know, and that's an interesting piece because um, I had to, I fought the publisher. Um, the book, only one word on one page in the book alludes to, um, to death. And that's where the children who have been asking mom, where does this invisible string go? And mom's explaining it can reach the top of mountains and down in the ocean, you know, and um, out of space. And then the children say, can it reach Uncle Brian in heaven? And mom says, yes, even there. And that one word heaven on that one page turned it into the number one book for grief. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the, a lot of the letters I get from all over the world, because I, I spend a great majority of my day answering um, emails from all over the world from people that have taken the time which blows my mind to write an author like we're all so busy but they they've taken the time to actually write me a letter describing how my book has helped their family in some way and I've always made a point and please God I'll always be able to do this to write every single person a personal letter back and that's why I think there's so many love ambassadors because when they get a letter back from an author um, that's really heard their story, I, I, you know, and I, I always say to them, we're now connected by an invisible string. So I feel like I have a very, very huge family out in the world right now, millions and millions of um, invisible strings I'm connected with. But it's also, what's so interesting is the book is also used as a celebration for love, for Valentine's Day, for Mother's Day, for back to school, first day of school. You know, it, it's just, it's a way of saying, I love you, we will always be connected. And this string can never be broken, can never be um, lost. Um, it can get frayed, <laughs> it can get tangled. <laughs> People write me, can't the string get, yeah, it can get tangled, it can get frayed, but love is the strongest force in the universe, right? It transcends time, it transcends space. Um, and that's it, that's it. I think that, that it was a simple message. I never dreamed, you know, in a million years that, that I would be, you know, uh, the lucky um, instrument that got to spread this particular message about love. But I was and I am. And, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. But um, yeah, it, it love is alive and well. And um, children, you know, it makes me it gets me choked up, actually, because when we can reach the children, um, we will change society. And uh, kids just get it. They get it. They, they, they have no confusion about it. Like, oh, I have an invisible string. Oh, and it can go anywhere in the world. And it connects me to everyone I love and always will. Well, that's awesome. So yeah, it's been, it's been a really amazing. So beautiful to witness how your love for your son started this ripple that's so global now. And so we talk about it. We talk about it a lot. And in fact, one night, you know, I'll, I'll sort of end with this. One night, Elijah came over um, to have spaghetti because <laughs> I love cooking him spaghetti. And um, I was having a hard time. I, you know, I was feeling really sad that night and um, and he knew it. And um, he said, go lay on the couch and, and don't um, look up. 
and um, he had apparently went and got a copy of The Invisible String and was writing in it. And he said, there's something on the dining room table. And um, I am going to cry now. <laughs> and he said, um, don't look at it until I leave. And he walked out the door to go home. And I opened it up. It was The Invisible String. And he said, Mama, you wrote this book for me so many years ago um, to show me how much you love me. And he said, just remember that the invisible string has two ends and I will always be on the other end of your invisible string forever and ever. I love you forever, Elijah. And I just thought, how full circle, you know, can it be? And um, sometimes when he comes over, you know, we'll talk about it. I'll say, do you realize that, that our invisible string gave birth to millions and millions of invisible strings all over the world? And um, yeah. It's it's a really uh, it's a really magical experience, and uh, you know, uh, even though it's hard for me sometimes because I am often dealing with with parents who um, have lost children, um, and the book is used a lot at funerals, memorial services, and this and that. And it's you know, death is very death is an ongoing you know phenomena. It happens every day all over the world and will forever. Um, but to get to be with people during their moment of grief, during their their um, their passage of grief, and to help them realize, and I say all the time that the invisible string is not just a children's story; it's it's as real as real can get. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why it's done so well because it's real, and that which is real and truthful um, sustains the test of time and always will. So anyway, thank you for letting me share my story. You brought tears yeah. to my eyes for sure. And, I, and that you both have a son named Elijah. Yeah, I love that. This. I mean, it's... And one more thing. I know you you don't want to be on the camera so long, but I just wanted to say there's people listening that are waking up to kind of these more like telepathic abilities. Like as we evolve and our hearts open, we think about a person and they call. And I feel like you're talking about this thread that's real. Like there's the love that's real, of course. And then there's this like knowing that we're, tugging on each other's strings like we feel it yeah, and we do we do we well, do it's energy right it's energy it's what those of us that have been on the spiritual journey for a long time we've been talking about energy um and connection and chords you know for for years and years and um and yeah yeah um love is the whole shebang love is it you know as steve shared you know, before me, I mean, love is, love is it. It's it. So I, I just, I, I sometimes have to pinch myself and go, you get to do this for a living. You get to earn your living sharing love and, and the message of love. Like, wow. <laughs> wow. I did something right. You know, I'm, so. I'm going to actually bring Steve on because I know both you and Steve have to leave early. And so we'll have you and Chanel talk a little bit after they both leave. Um, and uh, just everybody, you can find Patrice and her books at her name. It's patricekarst.com. And I see you've got new things coming out, the Invisible String Backpack and, yep. and, and Ruby and Lonely. So Yeah, yep, yep. The Invisible String Backpack comes out in July. Ruby and Lonely comes out in September. And I, what I, I tend to write books um, about big concepts. Um, you know, I don't write books, not that they're not important, but, you know, talking frogs and, you know, um, I, I tend to write books about very big concepts that matter to me um, in ways that can be accessible for children, um, that they can get it. And loneliness is a big theme for me. It's been a big theme in my life. So that's what, you know, Ruby and Lonely is about a little girl who suffers loneliness. And one day she discovers herself in the mirror and realizes that there's someone with her and always will be forever and ever. And it's her, it's her own, it's her own being. It's, it's her. So um, self-love is the key. I'll just share coming on camera, boy, what a beautiful story, Patrice. And then you want to hear something, uh, you know, a synchronicity here. Wow. Is my son, my, I have two, two uh, young adults now adopted at birth. My son has something called pyroluria, which um, where you're basically urinating out, in his case, B6, B7, zinc, the things that uh, 
that uh, protect you from anxiety. He has, even at 21, he has a severe separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, it's an incredibly loving home as, as I'm sure yours is, but what a neat a concept, the, the invisible sprint, this invisible string, you know, where you're connected always and always. Uh, yeah. So what a, what a just, uh, I can see how the world would benefit from this invisible string uh, idea, which is true. Somebody was putting in the chat, Resident Science Foundation, you know, Nassim Harriman, uh, his, his whole unified field theory, which was the extension of Einstein's work, is saying that everything is deeply connected, just like this Nobel Prize in physics, October entanglement. You've got things on different sides of the universe that are affecting each other. Invisible string, you know, it's what the Nobel Prize was for. Uh, so, but to make, to just make it so simple and call it invisible string, you know, uh, just, you can see the, the huge benefits that would flow for so many people, including my son. Can't wait to share this. Uh, yes, please do. And yeah, I tend to keep things simple. That's why my first book was called God made easy. You know, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a 500 page book girl. I'm a, let's keep it simple because, um, I think, and actually when it comes to children's books, I think most everything we really ever needed to learn on an important soul level, um, we could probably learn from kids' books. You know, yeah. they they teach us everything. The so, uh, or, or the kids run with God. You know. There are nine adult books, but the book that tells the entire story is a child children's book, which is the Little Soul in the Sun. If you heard so or read that. The whole message of conversation, you don't need to read the nine books, just get the children's book, little book this thin, <laughs> that tells the whole story as a children's story. Wow. Yeah, well, we probably all remember the kids' books that we read, you know, when we were growing up, were the ones that resonated the most with us, and they do, they stand the test of time. So, uh, yeah, I do hope you tell your son, um, in fact, get him a book. It's be the <laughs> yeah. sweetest way to let him know you're forever connected, and let me know how how his separation yeah, anxiety yeah, goes after that. You, Patrice, yeah. Boy, Godspeed to you and your work. Thank mm. you very much. You too. I'm reminded of the children's rhyme, row, row, row your boat, gently down the stream, merrily, 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 life is but a dream. <laughs> I mean, there it is. That's the meaning. That tells us everything we need to know in a, in a quick sure. run. Uh, sure. Well, Patrice, you've sold several more books. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I know that you're on your iPhone, so you might not be able to see all the chat. So I'm going to read just a few of the chat. Susan Woolridge, I'm going to order the book for my kids and my grandkids right now. Dia, Dia writes, Patrice, I so applaud you for that commitment to answer all those letters, which is beautiful. Uh, Reverend Jeffrey is promoting the beautiful video that we all want to watch. Um, Steve talking with Greg Braden and Nassim Harriman. Thank you, Jeffrey, for putting that link into the chat box. Grace Denise writes, wow, so beautiful and powerful and wonderful. And from what you're saying, I feel sure that the string never alters. It's just who we might lose sight of it at, my, at moments. But like the sun, it's always there, even when we might be seeing only the clouds for a time. Beautiful, Grace. Kiki writes, awesome. I will definitely purchase all of these books for my granddaughter, thank you. And Connie Baxter Marlowe writes, yes, Patrice, it's all love. Even the things we see as not love, we resolve that paradox with our construct of the conscious living universe. And she talks about the beautiful program they've talked about on this show. Um, Dana put into the chat box, Little Soul in the Sun children's book. Um, George Noble writes, I learned our giant oak trees, uh, important Drew and totems are aware of one another and they need community um and jeffrey pointing out that uh, that's his favorite song it's my favorite song too and he just ordered your books for the family so Aww. books are killing books are <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much it makes me so happy it really does you know i also want to let people know about humanity's team um and they now carry uh, the awakening world shows but, um, and here's even Alexander, he was just on our show last month. Um, but there's so many amazing uh, presenters that they have. It's kind of like the best of the awakening world all available. There's right there, by the way, is the book that 
inspired today's show, Steve's book, A New Universal Dream, My Journey from Silicon Valley to a Life of Service to Humanity. You can see all of this by going to humanitiesteam.org, humanitiesteam.org, and join them. They've got so many remarkable authors and courses. Um, and is there anything you want to really um, remind people of or point out, Steve, for people to know? Yeah, and thank you. Thank you. And this is, we're looking at humanitiesteam.org, which is the, the website, and that's with a Y, humanitiesteam.org. As, as we've mentioned, we're a nonprofit, 501c3, and our, our mission is to make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, and that's in 17 years, which is a big lift because, uh, of course, there are many people that are conscious all over the world now, but to say worldwide, the conscious living is pervasive. Wow, you know that's that's a big lift. So that's why we created the streaming platform. Uh, as, as Scott, as you mentioned, your programs are all on the streaming platform. The Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Urban Lasso is bringing his year long series to the streaming platform. There's a, there's a, a Soul Circles. I do a live program every Wednesday that's on the streaming platform. Uh, we have hundreds of these video trainings that are on this streaming platform. And then we have all these live programs, in some cases, three a day. And uh, it's really economical. And again, we even give it away to uh, half of the audience that can't afford it. Um, the reason that we put so much energy and effort into a streaming platform is if we're going to make conscious living pervasive worldwide, education is almost always the key, right? So our idea is just a simple idea of let's create a platform with hundreds of these video trainings uh, with incredible faculty uh, and all of these live programs, make it really economical. And then honestly, if you if you take even two of the master classes and there are hundreds of them there, I don't really know how you could continue to live what I'll call an unconscious life where you believe everything is separate from each other, this whole Einstein thing of the, what he called the optical delusion that creates a prison for us. He said this 75 years ago, and he said that we need to, uh, the only way to solve a problem is to go up to a higher level of consciousness, right? We can't solve problems at the same level of consciousness that created it. So that's the reason for the streaming platform. Make it economical, get it in everybody's home, translate it all over the world. And if you even took two of these programs I really don't know how you could continue to live in this optical delusion. And of course, as we would all, all of us here would share in testimony, when we see the world as sacred, when we listen to that still small voice, which is love, it is love is its basis, you know, if you reduce it to one word, uh, then, you know, it's transforming for us individually, our whole household, it's transforming. And ultimately, it's about creating a world that's transformed so that kids, you know, and future generations can enjoy this beautiful planet of ours. So, so that, uh, yeah, education is really big. And that's why you'll see on the humanities team site, all this focus on education, including free education. Here's the masterclass section. Um, uh, Jude Curvin and Andrew Harvey. I mean, those two together, that, that's incredible. Those are two of my, I respect them so much. Of course, Greg Braden is probably everybody's favorite a speaker about neuroscience and understanding things. And he does a lot with Bruce Lipton. These are all courses that are available. I, Steve, I recently listened um, to the very first one with um, Karen Noe about the Life After Death series. This is amazing, Eden. Um, it turns out that the, um, uh, uh, some of the children of uh, Wayne Dyer, Connected yeah. with an incredible channel who is channeling Wayne Dyer, telling us what it's like on the other side. <laughs> and, and Wayne is all about the we. It's all about, he wants to change it from I am affirmations to we are yeah. affirmations. And the story is fascinating. And so this woman has done a whole series with you, Steve, um, that you're getting out to the world. So Wayne Dyer lives on directly through your, your platform. He is, he is alive and well. I'll tell you, you will not believe in death any longer. I promise you, if you, if you, this life after death program, it's, as you mentioned, his two daughters, Sage Dyer, Serena Dyer, his two youngest daughters, and Karen Noe, who's the medium. And it's just uh, uh, absolutely astonishing because as you'll hear, if you 
Uh, and there's a free program. It's called Messages from the Afterlife, okay, on the Humanities Team site. It's a 60-minute free program, Messages from the Afterlife. And, and they share the story of how Wayne came in and told his daughter, Serena, uh, that she was pregnant and she was going to have her baby on July 4th. And she says, I am not pregnant and I'm absolutely not having a baby. Well, and then the whole family was like, hey, you had a glass of wine last night. She's like, oh, I'm going to go get tested. I'm going to show you all. She got tested. What'd she find out? She was pregnant due on July 4th. <laughs> if that wasn't enough. She's having her baby. You know, you don't publicize these things on social media. She's she's quietly in the hospital with her sister, uh, delivering her baby. And the phone rings as she's delivering her baby. It's her sister's phone. Her sister says, hello, it was Karen. No, he says, Wayne wanted to be here with you while you're delivering your baby. I mean, come <laughs> on. You know, <laughs> what? <laughs> Have you ever heard of anything just so jaw-dropping, astounding as, as that? That's it that's just a little bit of the invisible string. Exactly. I bring Patrice back on for that one, right? I mean, the Wayne Dyer invisible string is happening now. Yeah. 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 I mean, and then he wrote a whole book through Karen Noe. Uh, so they talk about that whole book too. So Wayne is is here, and, and this is the thing: there is no such thing as death. We're actually putting out a, a, a communication to our whole uh, email list tomorrow, Memorial Day, saying Memorial Day has changed. There is no death. We will know. You know, it's still it's still hard. It's still sad when we lose a loved one. We're not trying to take that away, but they don't die. They yeah. nobody dies. Wow. Well, um, Noda dies, but I know Steve, you've got to get going, and Patrice had to get going. We still have another author we're going to meet. The wonderful Chanel, but I want to thank both of you for being on the show. And thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, that was beautiful. Uh, Joy, I had no idea. I've cried, and my heart is just bursting open. Thank you both. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, spreading the message. It's just amazing how we're all spreading it in our various different colors and varieties, but the message is all the same. It's love. It's just different flavors, right? So anyway, I love you all and um, we're all connected. Absolutely. Sure. I'll, I'll yeah. close out with, with yeah. you part yeah. with what Connie yeah. wrote. Yeah. Connie wrote, this is a great juxtaposition of Steve's story and insights and Patrice's invisible thread. As Steve followed the invisible thread of his heart's knowing into bold committed action. So that's a beautiful way of putting it, Connie. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Um, one last thing for you, Patrice. Uh, Shoshana says, I am so inspired by both of you, Patrice and Steve. I will look forward to your books. Um, thank you for making the chalice of this world sweeter and more colorful. Oh. <laughs> oh. So oh. Thank You're you, so love so all of you. <laughs> really, really, really good to be here. Really, really good. All right. God bless you all. Yeah, Bye. God bless and Godspeed, huh? <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. We still have something else. We've got an amazing, um, and I'm going to let you, of course, introduce yes. it because she's your friend. We have another author coming all the way to us from France. So, um, and we'll have almost strong music in a moment. There Tell she is. Something. Look at this, this human angel. So, yeah. now, Meliani Amawe is my my dear soul sister and friend and this this beloved being carries so much grace so much angelic light into this world she has come from some of the most challenging beginnings i mean we'll get a chance to hear a little bit about her story but i mean chanel is your heart bursting open mine is just so cracked open from from patrice and steve's stories and the love that they're showing the world through their books and their work. And I think about where you are at the beginning of your career with your very first book, self-published, beautiful, poetic, this kind of channeled book from your heart. And what I'd love our, our guests to feel is, you know, what, what you've been through a little bit to get you to this place of open hearted channel of this really celestial frequency that's coming through your book and just for them to get to know you a little bit so what would you what would you share with us love yeah 
so happy to be here. Hello, everyone, and beautiful Sunday. Um, yeah, so my my journey um, with this specific book. So so this book is called uh, the Crystal Children Prophecies, and it's a channeled it's a channeled book that uh, came to me in two thousand and ten when I was in the Amazon uh, region, and I'd been there for two months working with my spiritual masters, my sp spiritual teachers. And it had been two months of intense training. Uh, every every day we would go through uh, initiations and ceremonies. And, uh, and after two months of that, I was no longer on earth. <laughs> it, it felt like I was really, the, the, lift, the veil was lifted and it felt like um, very, the, the, wor the worlds and the other dimensions were a lot more close than what we normally can uh, access. And so in this state of, um, I would say I, I was not uh, in a normal state anymore. My, my, I was fluctuating between these celestial and heavenly realms. Um, and that's when uh, the book came to me. So I would love to share with you how that happened because it was a very beautiful um, process. Yeah, share, mm. share what you would like about that. And then after you share about that, I just feel your story, your, your life story is very powerful for people to really feel, you know, if there's anything you would also share about your journey to be able to then open to this kind of light and channel that you have. So as you wish. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess when you, because what, what I was doing in Brazil was really working through all of my, my traumas, all of my pain and emptying all of those things. Uh, and I'm really working with that for, for many, many years before the book came to me. Um, I think there's a certain level of emptying and healing that needs to happen before um, you can channel, spe specifically in this way. So um, in this specific case, uh, I came back to Sao Paulo from the jungle after being through really, really intense initiations there. And I was in a house um, as a guest. I hadn't been in this house before. And um, I, I'm sleeping because I came home. I was exhausted and I, I wake up because I'm having these very intense dreams about heaven. So I'm dreaming about heaven and I'm waking up and I actually find myself standing in the garden. I'm walking in my sleep and I, I find myself standing out in the garden. And the song of the birds are really... Um, they're pulling me up towards the upper upper dimensions and I fall down some stairs in the garden and because I'm and I'm, I'm not really grounded in my body so I realized that okay if I don't ground now you know I might hurt myself and I hear this voice say go back into the house so I go back into the house and this voice says, go over to the, to the bookshelf. And I go over to the bookshelves. And then the voice says, take your hands behind the book books in the bookshelves. And I've never been in this house before. I'm a guest in this place and I don't know where anything is. Uh, but I take my hands behind the books and I pull out this. You can see it. So I pull out these scrolls and and then the voice tells me to uh, to go over to the sofa. And I go over to the sofa and then the voice says, go back to bed. And then I'm my physical body is sitting in the sofa and I'm watching my energy body, my other bodies go to bed. This sounds really weird, but it was a really strange uh, experience. And then this being, um, I can feel like my, my body is kind of occupied by this huge being, being maybe yeah two meters tall really big energetic presence and it starts to write 
and it starts to um, write almost like coded uh, Morse, you know, Morse, is, it, is that in English too? Morse messages? And it starts to write it down, like it comes down, like do 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 And I can't, I can't really stop writing. It just starts to pour out of me. And this goes on for four days where I could be walking in the in the shop and all of a sudden I would be like, I need pen and paper because it would just stream out. So I've channeled things before, but not in this way. I've never channeled uh this was this came down as a complete work as a closed work and um the whole book is full of coded messages for humanity so everything is is written in a way where while i was receiving the messages i would also see visions i would receive visions of the planet and the future and and uh, many really profound um, messages came through in the in the channeling beautiful yeah when you're using crystal children prophecies i know we've heard of um you know indigo children and i'm wondering if if you would consider yourself like an indigo or a crystal child and if it has anything to do with like these waves of consciousness that incarnate on the planet at different times as we're evolving and the energies are ascending what what is the crystal children to you 100 percent, and it's a new it feels like a new wave of beings that are incarnating and i have had been incarnating for some time now um but they talk about them in the in the poems they talk about the the way that these crystalline beings, um, how they view the world, and it's really beautiful. Like the whole, the whole book is really a, like a love letter from Source, and they talk about these new generations, uh, these new beings that are here. Yeah, I know Steve mentioned Neil Donald Walsh, and his his books are channeled. The conversations yes. with God books and. One of my favorite children's books is The Little Soul in the Sun, or I think it's A Little Light in the Sun, or Little Soul in the Sun is what Steve said. It's mm. this, um, this way that we're being reminded where we come from and who we really are and what we're, what we're doing here. And when I listen to you about your channel opening and the crystal children prophecies coming through, do you feel like this book is also for adults and people of all ages is this yeah it, it's actually much more for adults than for children um it is written to the child in all of us to the inner child the the child of god in all of us and the language is also uh it, it's it's a very light language all the poems they rhyme i would never be able to do that it's over 100 pages where everything rhymes and the way it's written is also uh, most of the line of the poems are in something called a quatrain which is four lines and um, Nostradamus also wrote in that way and the beings that I talked with because it wasn't one being it was a collective of beings and they they call themselves Nostradamus um, when I received the the codes so it's it's really like even reading it is almost like a, a download it's, it's not really, it's, you can go into almost like a trance when you read it. Um, I've had the opportunity to read it. And when I'm with the writing, I feel this innocent heart energy just growing and growing and hope and beauty. And it's so inspiring. And what I'm aware of is when you share that the channel, the collective is called Nostradamus in Italian or in Latin, it's our, our woman, our mother, our divine feminine is our Nostra Damas woman. Mm. So it's fascinating because we think of Nostradamus as this maybe ancient male character that channeled in these kind of apocalyptic prophecies. And it's a little bit scary when we refer to that version. But what mm. I'm saying is it's a different frequency than we've been led to believe as it comes through you yeah and they they actually because the whole book is like riddles and um they 
they were they were almost correcting that the whole time where they would write she instead of he um when they talked in a specific way so for sure my cat is here <laughs> they love getting in front of the camera yeah, like, loves to be involved <laughs> chanel there's there's a few questions that have come in yeah um, so i want to read a couple comments and a qu and three questions actually uh shoshana writes chanel you have such beautiful energy. I see the most beautiful angels around you, and I hear celestial music, feel lights, gorgeous gardens, so many visions just looking at you, feeling a big connection in my heart to Avalon just by seeing you. How do you stay so ever anointed in streams of humility and purity and celestial grace? That's quite a question. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I think you could speak a little bit about also your your deep commitment to service and to helping others with purification and how your own journey of healing the trauma and the karma that you've transmuted in this lifetime to be who you are. I know it's a very tender subject and I know it will give people so much hope if they understand that it's possible, if you are willing to be that transparent and share just a little bit with our audience why you are now this radiant being, the level of suffering that you have had to overcome mm -hmm. this lifetime. Yeah, I guess um, I had one teacher tell me, because I came to my, when I was 18, I had like, spiritual teachers and really powerful one came from everywhere wherever I went in the world I would bump into these really strong ancient lineages um and one of them told me that I I burned through a lot of karma early to kind of be done with it so I had a really rough childhood and um, um when I came to one of my teachers he he looked at me and he said um because I was 18 when I came to him and he said um I'm gonna help you understand why you chose to go through all of that. And that really changed everything for me because it was, um, you know, I had a really rough childhood and it helped me understand that there was a, on some level a soul choice in all of that. So for a long time, I went through a lot of turning and internal cleanup of, of all of that to, um, it's yeah, to be able to, to really work on the, um in the way that I am now so I think a lot of us have to go through some things to develop the heart and the compassion to really to really be there for others for sure and you've spoken with me at length about the power of forgiveness and then our work together that's been a, a big focus that when we've um I don't, I don't know if you want to <laughs> too, but, um <laughs> Scott's multitasking so um, Chanel and I are, are both in this beautiful um, mystery school, and she's been she's been with me for a long time. And working with the waters, Chanel, you have you have shared with me your connection to water, to purification, and to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And the amount of forgiveness that it's like we all get the like, all right, you sure you want this lifetime? Are you ready for this? Are you are you signing up? I, yes, like the little soul in the sun. I want to get to be forgiving. I want to embody compassion. And I feel like you really went for it on the other side of the veil. You said, give me the big, give me the mm -hmm. big initiation this lifetime. And yeah. um, we're, well, I'm a- um, so The yeah. question is, there's a question from Shoshana, which we're going to answer. What mystery school are you both in? If you can share for it, because you're both embodying very special energies, if you can share it and if it's not too personal. Yeah, I just, I want to keep the focus mostly on Chanel right now. And then afterward, we'll, we'll share a little bit more. I'll just say it's called the 13 Moon Mystery School. And Chanel found me maybe five years ago now, Chanel, through the yeah. sun initiation which I offered online and you were in Norway at that time and then 
through the resonance, through us kind of recognizing each other and like, like the soul sister, star sister connection, she's come deeper into the training in the Mysterium that I offer through my work in the 13 Moon Mystery School. And um, we can share more about that later, but really just back to you, Chanel, because I feel like you had many strong, very, very masculine teachers that you've sh shared about the yogic, Vedic, shamanic lineages. And you are now opening up to this divine feminine aspect. And it feels like you're channeling our woman, our <laughs> divine feminine. Yeah. Well, that's the power of working with Eden. She just pulls it out of you. <laughs> yeah. I've had a blessing of, I've had many male uh, spiritual masters in my life and it was such a blessing when I found Eden um, because she has you know to to me also a, a female teacher is so for me so 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 precious and um, it can unlock different things of course we women need need to come together and we can unlock different parts uh, of our being in that way mm. um another question that came in from Dana she actually had two questions. She wanted to know what was on the scroll mm -hmm. or was it for you to write on the scroll? So, yes, I have, um, the scroll was empty. So these, it was like, it was like that. Mm. Empty. But then, and they look like that. They look ancient. Uh, but then this being, when it started to write, it was writing. So if you can see it. Right, right. Wow. And I know English is not your first language. So for you to open your huh. in English, in rhyme, in this quatrain style, just instantly yeah. must have been amazing. I've, I've never done anything like that. I, I wouldn't be able to do that at all. Now I would, it would be, I would only rhyme like silly things. Uh, <laughs> there was, there was a ha house and inside there was a little mouse. I would, it would not make sense at all. But uh, uh, the Crystal Children prophecies are really almost like a, an e equation. Um, I, I'm happy to share some of the um, some of the poems. Please the do, message. yeah, please do. Yeah. For people who want to buy this, Chanel, um, Scott's going to put it in the chat right now, so they can click on this beautiful page for the book. Mm. And for those of you watching on Facebook, um, I'm going to go and actually show it. So it's now in the chat box. Um, and it's, it's a little bit of a long website, um, but it is activatedangel.com. Activatedangel.com forward slash the crystal children prophecies. Yeah. The activatedangel.com forward slash the Crystal Children Prophecies. And you can order it now. Um, you can learn all about the book. Um, of course, we're learning about it from Chanel directly. Um, and uh, channeled by, Ch it is as cute, I Chanel. Chanel. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, um, so yeah, what a beautiful book. Um, and let's all, you know, let's really support Chanel and Patrice and Steve. Let's get their books. Um, these are authors that we love. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So yes, please read and share some of it with us. Sure. Okay, so I invite you to close your eyes and really receive the vibrational frequency of the words. Morning star, shine bright for me tonight. Light up our path so we may see clear. Light up my path so I may come near. Sing me the song that I once knew. In the starry vast sky, all I see is you. Take me home to the golden fields and my throne. There always to remember my true heart song. Silence is the song where I will awake crossing all the bridges that I know I must take. The throne is golden blue. The golden bridge will take you through. There never to forget your true heart song. My name is love. 
and I have no form, since my formlessness is the only thing I know. The ring is magic, and it's easy to fall in love. Watch out, there is a danger in spacing out. <laughs> That's beautiful. Wow. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, well, I really feel um I feel this like connection to the Venusian energy in that poem very strongly. The morning stars and as mm -hmm. the Venus when she does her descent or her um journey through the, the heavens, there's the most ancient myth known to humanity where mm -hmm. you know they love the third brightest object in the sky and they called her the goddess Inanna 3,000 years ago in Sumeria and she was a yeah. star and then she would disappear for three days and that that was the descent of Inanna which is the goddess of love archetype and then they would pray for her return from the underworld where she became then the evening star where love and wisdom are together in balance after that journey. Mm -hmm. And and most of this channeling was actually me talking, or a child talking with a star. Mm -hmm. So it was a star that materialized and it was just, just talking. So, yeah. So powerful, beautiful. Well, you're both absolutely blessing us so much. Um, Lynn and Leif Wright, Eden is being a beautiful balance of divine presence in our lives for some time. Thank you for all that you do. And Thank I Thank you both. So good to see you here too. And I know that Eden, of course, has been such an impact on your life, Chanel. And I want to just let people know how you can get more of Eden. Um, and again, her website is her name, EdenAmadora.com. EdenAmadora.com. And there's a lot of wonderful things that she's doing here. Now, the two of you, if you go to her, her website and if you haven't taken a quiz, take the quiz. It's a lot of fun discovering your love archetype. And then you'll get all, up. About all about love. And you learn all about her. Remarkable. She's also had an incredible story. But I want to um, take you to the um, work with me. The work with, if you press on work with me. Um, and that's where we're going to learn about something very special. Her offerings. And I know several people whose lives have transformed by working with Eden. Um, she provides spiritual guidance, live group trainings, and visionary retreats. And we're going to go there for a moment to learn all ab <laughs> about this incredible retreat that she and Chanel are going to lead together in France. They're going to the land of Mary Magdalene. Yeah, so this one is, is for our sisters. This one is for the women that are ready to really dive deep into the sacred heart and take this pilgrimage on these holy lands. There's a beautiful video, we don't have to play it now, but when you go to the page, um, maybe we could even copy um, and put in the chat later, just the retreat sure. page for people to check out. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so Chanel actually invited me after coming to my home temple and doing two week-long retreats with me last year, she said, Eden, you need to come to the south of France where I live. This is the land where Mary Magdalene walked and continued to teach the way of love, where the true teachings, the Essene teachings, the Gnostic teachings of Yeshua continued for quite some time. And the Cathars are the, the beings that that lived there and continued this this path for hundreds of years and so the land has holy relics has sacred sites cave mary magdalene meditated in there's sacred crystalline spring waters that chanel lives very very close to that she did miracle healings in using the power of water and chanel if there's anything else you wanted to share just about that incredible land you've been there for a while now it's called you there for a reason so. mm. yeah um it's it's a very unique place on earth I've been traveling my whole life and there's something very special here connected to the divine feminine you can really feel it when you are traveling around in south France that there's something quite unique in the land there's a spirit here and I think for 
for all of you who feel connected with the Rose lineage, with Mary Magdalene, um, with the Christ lineage, this is for sure one of the most, <clears throat> yeah, sacred places to, to come to come to and to go to all the sacred temples and cathedrals and, and there's something unique here. Mm. Yes, it's so unique. And the part about this opportunity that's truly unique that I think is different than a lot of people who go on personal pilgrimages or with a group that's more looking from a historical lens mm -hmm. is that we're actually going to be doing the rites, ritual art, ceremonies, and deep work that has to do with our human ascension. We're going to be working with sacred oils like Mary Magdalene did. She was known as a mirafor, a bearer of the holy oil myrrh for healing amongst other plants and sacred oils. And so we're gonna be working with sacred oils and plants and working with inner technologies that will help us to lead our lives much more heart centered than that sacred heart from here forward. It's really an activation portal. It is a feminine renaissance in the sense of this renewal and regeneration and rising together in love to lead in love. And this is for women who are space holders, mm -hmm. way showers, lamp lifters, teachers, healers. And you don't necessarily need to be a, you know, a known, you know, circle leader or spiritual teacher. It's for mothers and leaders in your businesses and communities and the, all the ways we hold others so much, because I feel it is this time that through the divine feminine love, both in men and women, but mostly it's in this, this embrace of each other and collaboration that this world will really, really shift into the next octave. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm just so, so excited to get to share this experience with you and to experience, experience your, your own way of holding ceremony and the gifts mm -hmm. that going to co-create Chanel has been trained like she said in some deep lineages so the yogas the the uh, purification rites and rituals and um working mm -hmm. with sacred plants we're going to be going very very deep in this week and that's june 25th to july 2nd and um yes so if you want to know more, I believe Scott popped it in the chat. If that, yeah, if that through there, it's up there a little bit in the chat. So Shoshana is uh, feeling really inspired. She says she's a songwriter and children's book writer um, and has an adult book, Songs of the Sun. Beautiful. Yes, this is, this is so interesting because Chanel and I met through the Sun Heart Initiation and there's there's some codes coming in right now. I know that I'm here in this incredible community in Ashland with the beloved twin Ray, and they speak a lot about this, this golden body and this inner love and light that is the sun heart, that is Christ consciousness. And we're, we're all starting to really remember and awaken to, to this frequency that is, that is bathing the earth at this time, even in light of all the, the apparent division and chaos and adversity and unknowns, we're really in a blessed time. So we have each other, we have sacred community, Sangha and blessed, blessed circles. And this opportunity to be with Chanel and I is very rare and it's very small. We're keeping it very, very intimate and my sense is that if your heart is called, that you can reach out to us, you can direct message us, you can apply to be with us in this very sacred time for this, this journey. And uh, yeah, I feel like the, the right soul configuration is already forming. There's some amazing beings who are stepping forward to lead in love and um yeah, it's interesting because uh, Steve mentioned the Resonance Project and my friend Nassim Harriman actually, he encouraged his, his um, CEO of his company to be a part of our retreat. So she'll be there with us. And oh, I think beautiful. it's really about changing the world and 
you know, these, these pieces are coming through at a really big, a big level right now for many. So. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much, Janelle. I, I, yeah, I got a little so piece much. of granola, this little itty bitty <laughs> piece of granola. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it's great to have a co-host. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Thank you. And again, a reminder that you can learn all about Eden by going to EdenAmador.com. You can learn all about Chanel and her beautiful book by going to ActivatedAngel.com. And uh, there's an activated angel who's with every show that we do. His name is Omastar. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're going to close out our show with a beautiful song from Omastar. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you. So much. So it's this one. There it is. Oh. Oh. Spirit divine, come to me, feeling love, holding me, open my heart, allow me to see, beauty and love lives in me, we are holy, 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 we are holy, 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 we are holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy. The spirit of love, the gift of grace, an open heart, the sacred space. Open my mind, allow me to see. That I am whole and you live in me. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy. Spirit divine. Come to me, feeling love, healing me. Open my heart, allow me to see beauty and love surrounding me. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy. Spirit of love, a gift of grace, our open hearts, the sacred space. Open my mind, allow me to see that I am whole, and you live in me. You live in me. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy.
Oh, what a perfect song, beloved brother Omar Shar. That is just. I think that's the yeah, holy. So far, I love that song. If you've heard, it's going to be in your head today. Oh yeah, this is the. What, what's happening? <laughs> it's a new what, Scott? Uh, uh, what's that? Well, did you say it's a new hit for us? I no, I said, oh, it'll be in her head for the rest of the day. Oh, I know that. Yeah, whatever yeah. song you sing at the end of the day is in my head Typically. for the rest of the day. And I, I actually think that's a Karen Drucker song. I wrote another verse for it and I made it Momashar um, ism, but I have to, uh, I think it's Karen Drucker. Um, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank well, you. we have had a request. Thank you very much. Uh, from um, our dear one down in Ecuador, Darina. What's going to happen next week? As if this week wasn't enough? <laughs> no, but actually we have a great next week planned. Um, and I do want to share with people what we've got coming up. On Wednesday night, remember Bewitched? Remember um, I Dream of Jeannie? Well, it's kind of our version of that. Happily married to an Arcturian intergalactic channel. Um, we're going to meet... Vivian Survey, you've seen her on the show a few times, and her husband, Peter Benson. She is a, she's an extraterrestrial in a human body, and she's brilliant. Um, I really enjoyed her wisdom. And so we're going to learn what's it like to be married to an extraterrestrial. Um, and so that's going to be our show on Wednesday night, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And they also are actually both very wise beings. Um, and then on Saturday night, I'm actually going to be at a big memorial celebration uh, of a friend of mine who passed away. His wife has put together a big event, and she really asked me to be there to speak. And it's in the evening, and it's in the middle of the forest with no internet. So beloved brother Omashar will be hosting the show, and we're going to have favorite moments um, from some of our favorite luminaries. So we've pulled clips of Matt Kahn, Elijah Ray, Deepak, um, Michael Beckwith, Arisa Briones. Um, so definitely come and support our beloved Omar Shar. And I believe uh, is Trish going to be with us that night as well? Trish is going to try and be with us. She has. I hope so. However, it's going to be a really awesome dynamic show. Scott and I picked out the uh, best of the best from the last couple of years. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm really excited about it. Thank you. Thank you. And then on uh, a week from today, Sacred Sunday show, you know, let's face it, many of us know people that are dealing with addiction, um, or maybe even some of you watching are dealing with some, some addictions, some um, things that you're really attracted to that have been pleasurable, but have maybe gotten out of hand. And so we're going to have um, some of my favorite people coming back and talking about how to overcome compulsions, addictions. Um, one of the presenters is India Zoe Prema, who just wrote a book um, about her experience of coming out of addiction. And then my coach, actually, when I have needed support, uh, TJ Woodward is who I worked with. He's a beautiful man. And also Roland Williams um, from Wholehearted will be joining us. And Annie Rogers, um, all of them are amazing teachers and presenters on how to manage uh, compulsive behavior and addiction um, in a conscious way. It's all about conscious recovery. It's not about shaming ourselves or making anybody wrong, but it's really conscious recovery resources. Um, and of course, our beloved Omashar will be with us for all of our shows next week, as he always is. Thank you, brother. My pleasure. All so right. I think uh, Chanel's still with us, so let's, um, yeah. Absolutely, there she is. Um, yeah. Thank you. yeah, it's so sweet to have you on the show, Chanel. I'm going to get to hug you very soon now. Less than <laughs> yeah, lovely to be here with all of you. And there's a few of you writing in the comments that you would love to come. And we would love to, to be here with you and, yeah, show you the beauty of France. Great. Roger, if you can turn your camera on right now, we will sing happy birthday to Bonnie. Um, <laughs> but you got to turn on your camera if you can hear me, partner. There, I think the, I think the camera came on. There they are. Uh, two of our favorite global peace drivers, yeah. Roger, Bonnie. Omashar, can you do a little happy birthday ditto? Uh, I can. Um, 
<laughs> what? No, it's not that. I have to. I have to change microphone sources. Being. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bonnie. Happy birthday to you. That was um, the rehearsal, okay? So nobody unmute. We can if you want, but it'll be an absolute cacophony. Bonnie likes cacophony. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bonnie. Happy birthday to you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, we love you, Bonnie. Happy birthday. And may many, 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 many more. Look forward to seeing you at many more retreats. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Thank you, Eden yeah, Amador, so for a beautiful lovely. weekend. Thank you, everybody, for amazing. watching. It was a bit amazing. We're going to go get some brunch with some friends. And thank you all for watching. And remember, we can make any moment sacred by choosing to see the divinity in all. Gallery view. Well, so, that's right. Let's go to gallery view. And everybody can wave and say goodbye. Take care, everybody. Much love. Namaste. Namaskar. <laughs> <laughs>